Okay, to configure our iOS app to submit it to the App Store, what we're going to do is actually open it in Xcode. So I'll go open iOS tic tac toe dot or tic tac toe init.xc workspace. Make sure if you're using, I think it's React Native 60 or above, you're using the XC workspace versus the X project. Okay, so once you've got this open, you'll probably open up to this screen. What we want to do here, uh, first off, is go up to the Xcode and then go into Preferences. And in here, you'll want to go to the Accounts tab and make sure you sign into the Apple account that you, the Apple developer account that you created before. And this will allow you to go ahead and set up all the necessary profiles and certificates to then go ahead and authenticate and upload an app. So once you've done that, all you have to do is press this plus button down here, Apple ID, and continue through that process. Uh, once you've done that, we'll then go ahead and change the display, display name. So we'll set this to tic-tac-toe. And then the bundle identifier. This is something that's really important and needs to be unique to your application that kind of identifies what your app is. And the way you typically do this is via a reverse domain name. So for example, my company is Handlebar Labs. So what I'd probably want to do is com.handlebarlabs dot something unique to this project. So what I'm going to do is tick tack toe demo. Okay, so that's going to be my bundle identifier. And as we set up different provisioning profiles and certificates, they're going to be tied to this bundle identifier. Then if we go down further, you can see this deployment info. Um, actually, hold on, before we do that, here you can see version and build number. Basically, you can have a version. Uh, you set this however you want. And then the build number is something that just needs to increment as you go. You'll need to increment your build number anytime you upload to the App Store. And then the version number, you'll need to increment after you've actually submitted that to be published to the App Store. So, Say I have version 1.0, build one, I upload it to test flight, which we'll cover in a later video. Something is not right, we fix version 1.0 and we need to increment the build number then. Say this is submitted to the app store. What I'd wanna do is say, okay, I've got a new version coming out, it's gonna be version 1.1. I'll go ahead, change the version and drop the build number to one again. And I can just go through that process where once it's published to the wild, to the world, uh, you need to increment your version number. If it's just internal testing, you just need to increment your build number. So with that said, looking down at our deployment info, you can specify what this application actually targets. In our case, we're just going to be targeting iPhone, and we can say we only want our app to work in portrait mode. You can also go ahead and set the status bar style, other kinds of things, uh, which we can also do via React Native APIs, but this is just going to be the default version when someone first opens the app. Okay, with that identity and deployment info done, we can go ahead and go to signing and capabilities. And this is where the team you signed in and the bundle identifier uh, really matter. So what you wanna do is actually select a team to be associated with uh, this application that you're building. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my company team And then that's going to go ahead and give us a signing certificate and allow us to actually build and submit our application. Now there's alternative ways. If you've got a big team, uh, you may want to go down different routes of actually managing these provisioning profiles, these signing certificates, but this is going to be your most basic route. It works for small teams. It works if you're able to share a login uh, for a team email. So we'll just stick to this one. It keeps it much more simple. And with that, we've got the basic kind of Xcode and Apple configuration set up for iOS.